Hi folks and welcome back to LPJ Models. In this video I'm going to be building the 1 32nd scale Wingnut Wings Halberstadt CL2. The parts of the kit are spread over six sprues, one of them clear. They're moulded in the standard light grey Wingnut Wings plastic and the detail is crisp and refined. The raised details are subtle but really nicely rendered. There are rivets, rib tapes and there are also some really nice scallops on the wings. There are also some really nice finer details in the kit, like the seat cushions, the machine guns, the engine detail and the struts. Wingnut wings always provide a most impressively detailed package. The clear sprue is nice and clear, but I do fear that the windscreen is slightly too thick, but that's just the restrictions of injection moulding. Usefully, the photo etch fret comes with a pair of seat belts. That being said, I'm going to replace mine with some HGW fabric ones. The instructions, as we've come to expect, are a tour de force of detail, information and clarity. And whilst we're leafing through the instructions, I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work. If you're interested in becoming a patron, head over to www.patreon.com forward slash LPJ models. I'd also like to give a huge thanks to the person who sent me this kit. It's very kind of you, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Anyway, Let's get started with the build. The parts were removed from their sprues with my god hand single blade sprue cutters. These, although expensive, provide a really nice clean cut. And of course, you're going to have to do a little bit of sanding, but not as much as if I'd used a pair of Zurons. Once the parts have been cleaned up with a variety of Infini model sanding products, it was time to start assembling the cockpit. Wingnut wings have crammed in a ton of detail here. It's going to look like a nice, busy, populated cockpit once it's complete. To make painting easier later on, I built up the cockpit in a series of sub-assemblies. As to be expected with this kind of kit, I didn't get very far before I had to start doing some painting. The parts were primed in Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I used AK Real Colour RLM 63 for the interior components. This is a good approximation for the light grey green you see on the interiors of these aircraft. This was thinned around 40% paint to 60% Mr. Leveling Thinner. As you can see for the side of the cockpit here, I built it up in a light, mottled way. This was just to add some more depth and tonal variation to the interior. Not that you'll really see that much at the end, but I know it's there. One of my favourite things on these kits is tackling the wood grain, and luckily there was some, so I wasn't disappointed. The interior parts were prepared for wood grain by spraying them with MRP sand slash tan. The parts that needed to be brush painted were based with a layer of Vallejo German camouflage beige World War II. The 
before I dived into the wood grain proper, I needed to paint some details. The canvas wrapping around the top frame of the cockpit interior sidewall was painted with Vallejo stencil. The electrical piping was painted with AK 3rd gen smoke black. This is a slightly off black and I think it works well. Other various details were picked out with Vallejo, Citadel and Darkstar metallics. Right, let's get some colour sorted for the wood grain. I used a mix of burnt sienna, burnt umber and yellow ochre artist ores for this. This was thinned with VMS Universal Weathering Carrier Light. This is a really good non-reactive thinner for oils and enamels. I can't recommend it enough. Once I'd mixed the oils to a colour I was happy with, they were painted over the wood grain areas. You don't have to be too neat with this step because you can clean up any excess with a thinner. Once the oils had been sitting for about 10 minutes and the thinner had started to evaporate, it was time to start removing oil paint. For this I used a splayed old sable brush to remove the oil paint in the direction I wanted the wood grain to go. This could be a long process and sometimes you have to remove quite a lot of paint to get the effect you want but it's well worth it in the end. Once I'm happy with the general look of the wood grain, I start adding some small wiggles with the paintbrush. This just adds a bit more of a natural look to the finished product. With the wood grain and detail painting complete, it was time to start bringing together the cockpit components. The engine was next on the list. This was primed in black and then given a layer of Mr. Color GX2 Gloss Black thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. To replicate a slightly worn metal finish, I mixed in some light grey with some Alclad white aluminium. This was then sprayed over the entire engine block. The piston housings were left black and glued in place. And I couldn't make a Mercedes D3 engine without adding some wires. This was mainly in the form of spark plug wires, and for this I used a plus model 0.2mm lead wire. These were glued in place with VMS 5K Flexi CA slow setting, just to give me a bit of working time. And because of the flexible nature of lead wire, I was able to bend them carefully into shape.
All the wiring was painted with Vallejo German yellow. The supplied decals were then added to the engine. This is something I should have done before wiring up the spark wires, but you live and learn. These were placed over a thin layer of VMS decal set and fix just to help them adhere. With the engine done, it was time to tackle the seat belts. I decided to use a really nice laser cut fabric set from HGW. If you want to see a more in-depth video on how to make these, there's a tutorial I've done. I'll leave a link for that in the description. It is, however, a very old video, so please bear with it. But in short, the parts are separated from their paper backing. These are then threaded through photo etch buckles which look really effective. And any parts that need gluing are fixed with super glue. Patience is highly recommended when assembling these. They're very fiddly, but very worth it. To add some light weathering to the cockpit, I gave the details a wash with Abtoling 502 Sepia mixed with Universal Weathering Carrier. These steps may seem a bit back and forth, but it's true to how I constructed the model. I love how a simple wash can really bring something to life. The wooden engine bearer was then glued onto the cockpit floor. This sits at a slight angle and it looks a bit weird but it's actually how it's supposed to sit. The engine was then dropped and glued into place. I glued the fabric seat belts in place with VMS slow setting superglue. This gave me enough time to position them how I wanted them. And with the cockpit complete, it was time to bring the two fuselage halves together. Because of the mounts for the gun turret, this had to be done from top to bottom. The fit was tight, but it was manageable. I was so worried I was going to break something, but luckily that didn't happen. To fix the halves together, I ran VMS fast setting styrene cement down the seams. The two halves were then given a good squeeze to make sure they stuck together. And unfortunately, due to a lack of basic modelling skills, I left a nice seam that needed filling. 
I used VMS black super glue to fill this gap so I could see where I was filling. This was applied with the most humble of tools, the toothpick. Or cocktail stick, depending on where you're from. I started sanding it before the superglue had fully set. This seems a bit messy, but the plastic dust binds with the superglue and makes like a hybrid superglue styrene mix and it's quite durable. For the majority of the work, I used an 800 grit infinity sanding sponge. I did however move down to a finer grade just to finish and polish off the seams. Once I'd finished, I sprayed the seams with a white primer. This was to help me see if I'd missed anything, and if I did, the process was repeated. When I was completely happy with the seam work, the entire airframe was primed with MRP white primer. This isn't overly opaque, so needed several layers to build up to opacity. On the paint scheme I had chosen, you could see a hint of a previous paint scheme underneath. The previous paint scheme was black and white stripes, so I replicated this by masking off and then spraying the black stripes. With the stripes complete, it was really satisfying to peel off the tape. It's a shame a lot of this won't be seen. As I didn't want the stripes to be too stark, I misted over some MRP light grey, slightly thinned with MLT. I then added some shading around the details with a mix of MRP PC12 and black. This was thinned around 60% thinner to 40% paint and sprayed at around 8 psi. As most of this was covered I didn't need to be too careful, but I like spraying precise anyway. With the shading complete, let's cover it up with a nice layer of yellow. I used MRP Insignia Yellow and I cut this to desaturate it slightly with MRP Light Grey. This was built up in light layers. I did this for two reasons. One, if I sprayed it too heavily it would pull up and leave nasty marks. And two, I didn't want to cover up the detail too much.
With the yellow done, it was time to paint the blue stripes. The yellow was carefully masked off and I sprayed an initial, very thin layer of MRP Oxford Blue. It was here I realised the black wouldn't be strong enough to show through the blue as seen in contemporary photos, so I needed to re-mask and re-spray the black stripes underneath the blue paint. While annoying, this wasn't too much of an issue, I just had to make sure I lined up the masking perfectly with the previous black stripes. This was then given a very light layer of MRP black, just to bring back that contrast so the stripes would pop. It was now time to spray the blue properly. Like I said before, for this I used MRP Oxford Blue. I went through several blues until I settled on this one. It just matched the picture that I had in my head. And once again, this was built up with several light coats so as not to obliterate my repainted stripes. With the stripes painted, it was time for the moment of truth. Let's peel the tape. And surprisingly, it came out alright. I'm also going to be painting the wings yellow, but before that we need to add some texture and visual interest. I used a Uschi van der Rosten splatter stencil in a mix of PC12 and black. I then pre-shaded around some of the details with the same mix. This was sprayed around the wing ribs and framework, and also in the centre of the slightly sagged canvas panels to give a shadowed effect. There were also traces of the previous markings underneath the yellow. I tried to replicate this by using some different decals from the same decal sheet. These are the older style German crosses, and these will sit underneath the yellow coat. I'm hoping, because the Wingnut Wings decals are quite thin, they won't show up too much. There's nothing worse than seeing obviously double stacked decals showing through your clear coats. I then highlighted the rib tapes with MRP white. This was sprayed with a couple of light passes just to give the impression of stronger highlights. Then I started laying over my previous mix of Insignia Yellow and Light Grey MRP paint. Once again, I had to build this up lightly so I didn't obliterate any detail painting.
Yellow is a tricky colour to work with, but if you take your time and build it up in thin layers, you won't have any problems. The central upper wing section was then painted with MRP Oxford Blue. As you can see I did some really nice pre-shading and modelling effects. It's just a shame I went and put down a little bit too much paint and hid the lot. Here you can see me gradually covering up that beautiful work. Whoops. Okay, let's glue the wings together. There's quite a lot of surface area to glue here, so you should get a really good join. Just make sure the mating surfaces are free from any paint. For the radiator, I decided to use Alclad Magnesium. I felt steel was too dark and aluminium was too light. The vertical stabiliser and rudder are supposed to be white. This was primed in MRP white and then given a layer of clear dope linen version 1. This makes a nice off-white base colour. I then shaded along and underneath the rib tapes with my previous mix of black and PC12 heavily thinned. This will add some nice artificial shading. And once again, I taped off the rib tapes and sprayed these with white. These were then given several thin layers of MRP white mixed with clear dope linen 1 for a nice off white. It's now time to put the decals on. The areas underneath the decals were prepared with VMS decal set and fix. The decals were then carefully pushed into place and any air bubbles rubbed out with a cotton bud. Once the decals had dried and settled into place, they were sealed in with a layer of VMS Satin Varnish HD. This was sprayed unfinned at around 17 PSI. The lower wings were then glued into place. And it was here, at this step, where I made a very slight mistake. You see, I decided to put the landing gear struts on now, when it would have been much more beneficial to put them on later on in the build. After putting them on at this stage, they got in the way, and they got knocked a fair bit. And there were several stages where I was really worried I was going to break them. To add some variation to the build, I decided to cover the wheels with lozenge. 
These are the wingnut wing supply decals, and they went down okay. They needed a bit of manipulation with a cotton bud, but combined with the decal set and fix, they adhered nicely and there were no bubbles in the end. I had to make a bit of a guess when it came to painting the exhaust pipes, as I couldn't find any source material telling me what they were made of. So I hazarded a guess and started with Alclad Pale Burnt Metal. I sprayed this over the entire exhaust pipe. I also added some heat staining with MRP Burnt Iron. I focused this on areas that I thought might get the hottest. It might be wrong, but it looks good to me. This was followed by a speckle of Migamo Light Rust Wash. I didn't want it to look completely rusty, just as if there were a few light rust spots. Once I had liberally splashed the exhaust with rusty stuff, I cleaned some of it away with Universal Weathering Carrier and a fine brush. I added some light soot staining to the end of the exhausts with some black artist oils mixed with some dust. This was then blended in with a soft brush. The propeller was painted with a base of MRP sand. I then used Vallejo colours to paint on the laminated wood grain effect. This was followed with some oil wood grain to make it look nice and realistic. I wanted to emulate a slightly older propeller, so I used burnt umber and French ultramarine artist oils and mixed up a dark brown black. This was painted liberally over the propeller. I then started the same process that you saw earlier, removing the paint and streaking it with a soft splayed brush. One of the other additions I added to the kit was an Edward Brassin Parabella machine gun. This was much more refined than the kit part, and to be honest, I didn't know I had them, I just found them in the stash. The main body of the gun was painted with Mr. Metal Colour Dark Iron. This is quite stinky, but it's also buffable and looks really good. The paint was buffed with an old soft brush and it took several passes to bring out the shine.
With most of the build complete, it was time to start with some minor weathering. I mixed up some Abtal and 502 dust and sepia to add some shading to the rib tapes. I didn't want to use too dark a mix because it would look quite stark, so I decided on a dirty, muddy middle grey. This was painted on and then blended away with a brush damped with thinners. Any excess was then blended in and wiped away with a cotton bud. This also helped reduce the effect, making it look a bit more subtle. I added a darker pin wash to other areas of the model. This was my usual French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber mix. I also added some streaks to the underside with Abtalung 502 engine grease. These were once again blended in with some thinner. I also added some light speckling with my French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber mix, but heavily thinned. I'm talking about 90% thinner to 10% paint. This was then followed by adding some dirt to the wheels. For this I used MIG Ammo Dry Step Splashes. This was brushed on liberally and then blended away with a cotton bud. With the wheels on, there wasn't much left to do apart from to add the rigging and stick on the upper wing. Always the most nerve wracking part of any build. But let's start with the rigging wires. Luckily I had some gas patch turnbuckles left so I used these in this build. These were glued in place with VMS black super glue. For the rigging cables I used Infini Model 132nd scale aero rigging wire. To make things easier I added the rigging wires to the upper wing before I glued the wing in place. These were glued in place with VMS slow setting super glue.
The way superglue sets is by reacting with moisture in the atmosphere. So if you have trouble with any parts sticking, sometimes just breathing on them can help accelerate the process. Rigging can be quite a daunting process, but it's actually quite simple if you break it down into a few elements. First off, it's better to rig from the inside out, so start at the fuselage and work your way to the outer wings. And this goes hand in hand with planning, which is also quite important. Make sure you know what you're doing and where you're doing it, so have your diagram to hand and follow it carefully. And it goes without saying, patience is key. Sometimes things don't go to plan, but remember, everything is reversible. If you keep these in mind and take your time, you'll have no problem whatsoever. I probably shouldn't be using my sprue cutters to trim off the elastic, but they work really well. The upper wing was glued into place, once I'd got the positioning right anyway. Once the wings were on, the glue had dried and I was happy with the alignment, it was time to work on the rest of the rigging. This was the more tricky segment, purely because you're working in such a small area, but it was much the same as before. And after rigging my 1700 scale HMS harvester, I felt quite equipped for the job. One of the most challenging things I find when rigging, and I'm sure many of us do, is having the wires stay in place, especially under tension. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way around this yet, apart from holding it in place and being very patient. But as ever, the end result is worth it. And with the rigging done, it was time to bring together the small details and finish the model. And with that, the build was complete. Once again, I want to give a huge thanks to my patrons. Thank you for supporting me. I also want to say thanks to you for watching. If you like the model, let me know in the comments. Or let me know if you didn't. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. I'm James from LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.